it's interesting when you hear the, the audio that we did, um, it's kind of off and maybe the talking's a little quiet, but if you understand, we were making this video with our generator on in the background. It sounded really good if you listened to it with a generator. So, um, and of course, just like in true fashion, our children join us in the ministry, and so Jack's up here. He, Jack and Charlie are the best minister, uh, missionaries we have, um, and you can see that from the pictures up there. But uh, Lauren and I uh, had a great time this year. Uh, we tried to compress about eight months into a five-minute video. This doesn't even do it justice. Um, it seems like every time I turned around, we were doing, we were giving, getting something else that we needed to get started. Uh, we returned back to Zambia this year in April, um, and the first of April. And when we had left last year, we had seven active Bible studies going. And due to my sector missionary's vehicle breaking down and the uh, the weather turning bad, he wasn't able to get out there and maintain these ministries. Uh, or these uh, Bible studies that have been going on. So my first goal when we got back there was to actually get out to these villages where we had these Bible studies going. And come to find out, of the seven, we had five, uh, five of the Bible studies that were meeting on a regular basis. That is what it's all about, is to train our local pe the local people so that the ministry continues whether the missionaries are there or not. So we get back there, and we're excited to see everything going, and, and uh, my sector missionary left, and... And I was going to have to try and figure out how to maintain these seven Bible studies and to create new Bible studies. And, and uh, pretty much got there and I told God, I was like, you know, this is all you. I, I have no idea what we're going to do. But uh, through some uh, um, discipling that we've been doing with a couple of guys, we were able to set up some, some uh, zone managers that would go out and take over a few of the Bible studies with me being able to just check in on them every once in a while. Um, one gentleman we put out into a village that had one Bible study going in the time we were there this year. He's, he increased that to five Bible studies with a sixth one starting the next week after we left. Another gentleman start, had two Bible studies. He turned that one into five. Another gentleman had uh, one Bible study, and he turned it into five. That was 15 Bible studies. And then Lauren got a couple of opportunities to minister, and I'm going to let her talk about those. And then because I felt left out, because I didn't have one I could just claim myself, because I had all these other ones, I went and started one the week before we left, too. Exciting to get back. So we ended, we left uh, Zambia this year um, with 18 active Bible studies going. Uh, we saw, you know, if you're a numbers kind of person, we saw plenty of, uh, you know, well over 100 healings. We had well over 150 people come to Christ and 25 uh, from a, uh, just one showing of the Jesus film in a particular village. The, mu the singing you heard on the video was from that village, uh, and we took it that night uh, before the Jesus film, and we saw 25 people come to Christ that night. We have an active Bible study there every Sunday, or excuse me, every Wednesday now in that village, and uh, really excited what God's doing in those uh, Bible studies. Um, like I said before, our goal is not to go in and be the missionaries in the area, that will be there for 25 years. We're there to train the people so that they carry on the viral movement of God. Hello, welcome to Ministry with Children. Um, so I'm just going to, I'll let you know, we work with Overland Missions, which is a non-denominational um, organization. It's a nonprofit based in Zambia. Um, and we worked with them since 2013. Um, Sean and I were nurses um, before we went to Zambia. We had regular full-time careers, worked great jobs, made great money. We were on the other side of fundraising. Um, and the Lord called us into ministry. We were, we were faithful of what he gave us. And instead of saying, well, I'll, I'm going to give you more money, which is kind of what, you know, sometimes in our human minds we think is what he's going to give us. He said, no, I'm going to give you an opportunity. I'm going to give you an opportunity to serve and to show people how to, how to live in a way that pleases me. Um, and so our, our main goal with Overland is discipleship. Um, we go and live in the area where we serve. We live in tents. We have no electricity. We have a generator. We run probably about every three days. Other than that, we live on some solar lights and that kind of thing. I do have a kitchen tent where I have a propane stove, oven, fridge. Um, but it's, it's, it's a rural living. It's a lot different than I worked in the operating room. That's a very controlled setting. Um, and now I live 
in a tent with my children, homeschooling, and that kind of thing. So, I mean, our lives have changed so much, but it's been nothing but positive. I always say, you know, yeah, the Lord, he, he raised us up and put us in tents. <laughs> that's what I mean. That's, we've, we're headed in the right direction with him um, by doing this. Um, but some of the ministry that Sean was talking about, um, I had been talking to a fellow missionary, and I said, I just really feel fulfilled in this calling that I make sure that my children are provided for, that they have, you know, their meals, that they have a stable household, even though we do a lot of traveling, um, that whenever Sean comes home from doing ministry, that, you know, that there's a warm, you know, meal and that kind of thing. And I said, you know, the Lord had to work with me on this, you know, coming from the working mom mentality to the stay-at-home mom mentality. Um, and the Lord had really, he said, you know, this is, this is what you're going to do. And so I said, you know what, I just feel so fulfilled in this. And the very next day, one of our local pastors um, in Zambia, he, his wife came to us and said, well, I've started two women's Bible studies and you're going to teach them. I was like, well, I'm going to be even more fulfilled. <laughs> and so the Lord has just given us more and more opportunities to serve. Um, and just like the video said, these women, um, they, they don't feel worthy. Um, they don't feel worthy of the Lord's love. They don't feel worthy of really anything because that's what their culture teaches them. Um, and so being able to go in and say, no, you're perfectly worthy the way that you are for the love that God is giving you. I mean, the Lord, he is going to, he is going to change your life tremendously, but he's going to come to you just where you are. You don't have to do anything to change for him today. You just have to, you have to believe. Um, and whenever we do um, the Bible studies with these ladies, um, one of them is at a shop um, or at a group of shops. Um, and so it's not at the traditional like church type setting. And at these shops, all of these ladies basically sell, sell the same things. And so there's a lot of competition. Oh, have you made sales today? Oh, if you do make a sale, can you make change? And they're not going to help each other and that kind of thing. So there's just, there's a lot of competition among these ladies. And, with, and about three weeks into doing the Bible studies at the shops, the customers were saying they're nicer to one another. They help each other out. If somebody's had two customers, they actually refer that, then you know, the third customer to somebody else. Say, no, my friend hasn't had a sale today, and she sells the exact same thing at the exact same price. You should buy it from her, and I'll help her make change if she hasn't, you know, if she doesn't have this, the right amount of money. And so just seeing the amazing practical changes in these ladies' lives, much less the changes that are happening in their families. Because I also, I also showed them in First Peter how um, a woman who encourages her own relationship with the Lord can change her entire family without a word. And because in that, in that culture, she's not going to get very far by speaking out to her husband, by speaking against him in any way. And so, in, I mean, there's a promise in the Bible that says, you're building up your own faith, and by your faith, everyone in your family can be reached without a word. And it's, it's just incredible to be able to see these ladies and how they're affecting their homes, their villages, and the entire community, because even their customers who do not live in their village are noticing the changes. Um, and so we're, we're really seeing incredible um, just differences in the area where we're living. Um, some practical things, if, um, if anybody wants to talk to us after um, the church service, just let us know. We, um, we do live um, off, but we have partners. We don't call it, you know, support, because um, just like Pastor Hassel was saying, no, this is a credit to the people who are partnering with us. This church partners with us. Individual members partner with us. And every victory that we see is your victory. Every success that we see in ministry is your success in ministry. And in Philippians 4, it gives, I mean, it gives all these promises to the people who give to ministry. And so we are already so grateful um, for this church who has already partnered with us. Um, we are doing a bit of fundraising to help build a house. You have seen our tent there. Um, with homeschooling now, it can, it can get a bit difficult um, with trying to do homeschooling and cooking and all that kind of thing in different tents. And so we are trying to build a home, a structure where we can have a bit more stability. The weather doesn't affect our daily lives as much because we'll have all of our homeschool stuff and then a wind comes and knocks all of you know, the flashcards away. Um, not that we'll always do school inside, but we'll have the option of doing school inside. Um, and so that's just one of our, um, our practical needs at this time is that we're fundraising to help build um, a home for our family. 
Um, but again, I just want to um, encourage you and also challenge you. I grew up in this church. I grew up doing missions within this church. And so I want to encourage you as members to invest time, invest whatever you have into the youth of this church, into the children, into the ministries that work with children and youth. Because that is, that is one of the ways that the Lord really spoke to me early on about missions. I mean, I've had a heart for missions since I was in, you know, GAs in elementary school. Did I know that it was going to turn into, you know, living in Africa full time? No, I didn't know that. But the Lord did. And each, each member who has been a Sunday school teacher, a GA teacher, um, who has gone on, you know, choir tours, who's, you know, gone to, gone to summer camp, those are the things that really make a difference in the youth of this church. So please take the time to invest into the youth and invest into the young families of the church. Um, so again, we are so grateful, and I, I think we do want to open it up a bit to questions. If you have any questions for us, um, we'd love to answer them for you guys. Right now, our budget's about $30,000 for the house, and that's to make it to where we can live in it full time. Um, we, everything about Zambia, it's not like we can run down to Home Depot and grab some two by fours. Um, our trees are, our, our wood is cut from trees that are cut down locally. The wood is hand hewed. Um, there is never a square angle. Um, the concrete, we have to, we make all the blocks for our house. Uh, by hand, we go and buy cement, mix it with sand, put it in forms, let it dry, then we use those for the brick walls. Um, grass is cut from the local area and we use it for the roof. So it, so it sounds like it's not as easy as you think when it goes to build a house, but um, it is going to be, a, we, our budget is about $30,000 right now. For our personal children, for our two kids, or for the children's education for ministry? Um, our two children, um, we attend a church in Big Spring, and they have a classical academy attached with the school, and that school has promised us um, classical curriculum for our children all the way through until they're finished with high school. So Charlie Joe is kindergarten this year, and so we are learning together, um, and we are determined that we're going to get through kindergarten together. Um, awesome. Yes, so I am homeschooling our children. Um, Jack just turned four and has no interest in school at all. If he walks into a church that we're visiting and it's kind of the school setting where everybody sits at a desk, he's kind of going, no, I'm, I'm done here. It's time for playtime. I need to go to the nursery class. Um, but for, for now, um, we are, we're learning how to do school together. <laughs> Yes, ma'am, we do. Um, I have a business card that I can give you, and it's got both Lauren and mine's email on it. I'll make sure and get you one. And anybody else that wants one, we have some that have it. Yeah, we do send out a monthly newsletter, and so if you want to be on our newsletter list, um, we'll have something prepared. We'll yeah, even turn right. over a piece of paper. And if you want to be added to our newsletter list, please put your email down on there, and we'll get you on the list. And that way, um, you can get monthly updates. We're also on Facebook, Our Hearts in Zambia. We have a page um, that we try to do fairly frequent updates on whenever we're in Africa. We try to do at least once a week whenever we go to um, to internet. So. So the question there was, how large is the area that we, that we serve in, and do we feel safe? So the area that we serve in is in the western prov province of Zambia. Um, we're actually assigned to what was called the Sioma District, um, and it's really about 1,000 kilometers uh, by 1,000 kilometers square. Um, but in Zambia, nothing is broken down like that. Uh, it's never just one big square. You would never do that. So uh, from the Zambezi River, if you look at the map, from the Zambezi River going west towards uh, Angola, we cover that entire area from Namibia up until about halfway is where we've been. We still have 
more area we can go from there because we're the only missionaries, our base is the only missionary base uh, for our organization that's serving in that area. Uh, feeling safe? Yes, ma'am, I feel very safe there. Uh, we've been re accepted very well. There's a, always a constant little conflict or something. People don't agree with you, but on our area, we don't have a lot of uh, uh, any kind of uh, violence or anything like that that is uh, shown to us. Most of the time, because we allow the Holy Spirit to go before us, we, we ask him to go before us. Where we go, we're accepted. Uh, and because of that and the leading of the Holy Spirit, we... Uh-oh, the wife was wondering. Yeah. Okay. Some of the practical ways, the reasons why we feel safe, like in our, you know, in the human sense, is that we do have um, security guards 24-7. Um, and so we have like weekend security guards, night guards, day guards. We also have a very large mastiff um, breed that is very protective toward us. <laughs> um, and so we, we have, I mean, we have safeguards in place. Um, and we're always trying to um, keep in mind, um, just be very mindful of the area around us. We're on the river. Um, so are, there are things, you know, like the wildlife to think about as well. Um, we did lose a dog to a crocodile this year. Um, and so we have new safeguards in place um, for any visitors that come to us on how close they can be to the river, where they can go. Um, so there are, you know, practical um, things that we've tried to put in place. And also, like Sean said, I mean, we, um, we, you know, pray over our property. We pray over the places where we're going. We say, you know, Lord, prepare the hearts of the people that we are going to see. And we see very little um, conflict. No, ma'am, we're in a rural area. Um, the closest um, village to us is about 10 miles away. Um, the closest, like, grocery store or gas station is about an hour and a half away and a border crossing to Namibia. Um, and so some of those, you know, the conveniences are fairly far away, um, but also living further away from a town, usually the people accept us very well in the rural areas. And that's one of the reasons that we're there is because there aren't a lot of people willing to go to them. They want to stay in the city and be more comfortable, like where there's a grocery store, gas station, um, that kind of thing. And so we are, um, we feel like we are very privileged to be able to actually go out, live with them, live similar to the way they do, and that way we can reach them more easily. What do we eat? Um, usually we eat normal food. <laughs> Um, the, 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 like, what, and that's, you know, I think somebody mentioned tonight, like, oh, when's the last time, you, you know, do you get to have stew, you know, whenever you're, um, in Africa? The only limiting factor is usually that I would cook that over the fire because I would use so much propane on a stew to keep the meat going for so long. Um, but, I mean, we eat normal food. We do have a freezer, and so we can go to Namibia and get groceries, bring them back, freeze them. Um, the local food, um, the, the mainstay is um, a very firm grit. It's a cornmeal. Um, it's so firm that you can roll it up in your hand, and this is kind of, it's a social thing to be rolling it while you're talking, and then whatever vegetable or meat you have, you just make a divot in your, um, into the cornmeal or shima, and you pick up, you know, because you don't have utensils, and so you pick up, you know, the vegetables or meat, and then you eat it with that. And then, so they go through a lot of the cornmeal. It's kind of the filler. Um, and then the vegetables or the meat are just a small side. That would, that would be more of a traditional meal. Our biggest thing that um, we have come to find out when we were there uh, is, is that the gospel or the, the name Jesus has been taken to the area, but it's not the true gospel that's taken to the area. It's very, uh, very uh, legalistic church views that have come in and things like that, that Jesus has almost been washed completely out of, the, out of the picture. Or they've taken the opportunity and brought their local religion into, into the church. And so they've done a bit of animism where they've actually kind of pulled them together to uh, create their own religion. So one of the things that we like to do is to go in and let's, all right, let's the basics. Let's go back to the basics. Why are we here? Who is Jesus? And to free people from that legalistic uh, uh, mindset that they have been taught and to see bondage and, and change just fall off of these people when they realize, you mean I don't have to go to church on Saturday? I don't have to go to church on Sunday? Um, because those are, that right there, that topic is huge for us. 
that, well, what day is the Lord, what is the Sabbath day? Um, well, we, you know, let's talk about what the Bible says, because in Africa, your week starts out on a Sunday, so that would mean the seventh day would be on Saturday. And so it's been a lot of confusion just trying to break through the walls that because they have not had the discipleship and the way to study the Bible, they've actually, uh, it's been fun to, to break down those walls and build unity between churches again. So the churches that we normally see there, we have Seventh-day Adventists, we have, uh, we have a bit of uh, Catholic involved, um, we have Pentecostal there, um, what's the other one? New Apostolic is there. So there's a lot of different churches there, but it seems like once a church was built, they were kind of left there to flounder on their own. And so we want to go in, and we don't go in to try and change the churches. That's not my job. We don't represent any particular churches. Like Pastor was saying, we represent a whole bunch of churches in West Texas. Um, we, we believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that's what matters. And so we want to go in and preach the gospel. Uh, if it's not in our Bible, we're not going to preach it. And so we've done a, a, a really good job of going in. We speak to the people. They're the ones that are going back to the church, and they're changing it from the inside to go back to the gospel. Um, their main crop is maize. Um, because that's what they grind up to make the shima that they eat. Um, and so that is the main crop in all of Zambia. Um, and so that actually keeps the shima prices down. Um, so you can get a really big bag of mealy meal that would last a large family for like two weeks for about $10, um, 10 U.S. dollars. Um, but we also, we have a garden ourselves because since we do live so far away from a grocery store. And so we've, we've grown things like, you know, squash and tomatoes and um, onions and um, regular yellow corn, okra. And so we do have a garden ourselves. Um, and so as we have more and more seeds, as we grow more crops, it's interesting to watch some of our, the workers that work with us take those home and then want to prepare those things for their families as well. Um, a <laughs> yes. That's, a, that's good afternoon or good evening. <laughs> um, the question was, what is the language, what is the culture, um, which is all one word. It's Lozi um, is the language. Lozi is the culture. It's the tribe name. Um, the Lozi tribe is in all of western Zambia. Um, it's in part of Angola, part of um, Namibia. And so we're very fortunate that we just have one language because there are up to 70 different dialects in Zambia. But our area is very fortunate that we just have one that we're focusing on. And we do use translators. So and there, our translators are incredible. We have time for one more question. Um, Zambia was a British colony until the 60s, um, and then they gained their independence. They had a pretty big civil war in the 70s, and then they haven't had much of a scuffle since then. Um, they do have a tribal government. The tribal government um, is chiefs over each district or each area, um, and they actually own the land. Um, each chief, and then he has um, like headmen, like mayors who work for him. Um, that he appoints. And there is a political government. There is a president in Zambia. There are, um, there's like the House of Chiefs, and then there's, you know, the more political side of the government. Um, and so they do work together. The, the government is fairly stable. Um, I can't say that it's perfect by any means, because I think that every, every government has their issues. But the, the kwacha or the currency is also fairly stable at this time. They just had a, um, an election right before we did in 2016. Um, and so in the incumbent won the race. And so we have the same president that we did. And he is a um, supposedly a Christian. Um, and so that helps to keep um, all of the nonprofits um, like Overland in the area because he is fairly supportive of them. 
um, Overland does have, um, has had an amazing opportunity to start placing chaplains in each of the chiefdoms. And these um, chaplains, their, their main focus is to be able to give guidance to the chiefs so that these chiefs aren't going to a witch doctor or a traditional healer or anybody like that. They're actually going to a, um, a pastor who is trained with Overland who now is um, somebody who can give them spiritual guidance, who can show them the gospel. So whenever they do have a spiritual question, there is somebody to go to that isn't going to steer them in the wrong direction. Um, and so we are, we are just, I mean, we praise that we have that opportunity through the organization that we're working with. So just think, you guys have been affecting the government even in Zambia because of these um, chaplains who are now um, serving with the different chiefs in the area. And so, I mean, just, you, you don't know how far um, the the Lord is taking things. He is just, he is moving incredibly in Zambia. He's moving incredibly everywhere if you just search for him. Um, and so again, we want to thank you so much for the opportunity to come and give you guys an update. If you want to speak with us one-on-one, um, we'll do our best to keep our kids fairly happy so that we can chat with you guys. Um, we'd love to have email addresses so we can add you to our newsletter list. If you're interested in partnering with us on an individual basis, just let us know and we'll um, let you know how to do that as well. Yeah, stay right here with me. I'm just, uh, I, I'm curious, how many of you, um, like, had Lauren in Sunday school or something like that? Would y'all raise your hands? Went on mission trips with her, et cetera? Um, church, that says a lot, doesn't it? Um, there really is something to this priesthood of believers thing, isn't there? Um, that every Christian is a, is a saint, is a missionary, is a minister. We're all called to be on mission. Um, I mentioned this in my prayer a few minutes ago uh, because it, it deeply impact, impacted me this past week. One of my heroes, uh, Paul Powell, died this past week. Um, he was a pastor in Texas life and even Southern Baptist life for many, many years. And one of his, he had a lot of catchphrases, but one of his big catchphrases was this. He said, we need to get off of our seat, on our feet, and into the street. That'll preach. That's what it's all about. And if that's in your neighborhood or in Zambia or wherever, or partnering with people who are in Zambia, um, that's pretty incredible. So... Uh, with that in mind, let's pray, and then we'll be dismissed. And please come and, and visit with them as well. Lord, we thank you so much for what we've heard tonight. And we know we've just heard the tip of the iceberg about what you're doing and how you're, you're at work. Um, we thank you for using Sean and Laura and, and their kids and, and calling them um, to this great work, realizing that we can support them and pray for them and fellowship with them and uh, Lord, we're, we're also very cognizant that as citizens of your kingdom, you, you put us all over the planet, and uh, borders do not hold in the kingdom of God, and uh, we praise you for that. So, Lord, continue to bless their ministry, and help us, Lord, to, to be cognizant also of uh, those children, or youth, or younger uh, adults who we can mentor and invest in um, so that they may realize uh, that you have a very special plan for their lives as well. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs>